Hope you guys enjoyed your weekend. Um, so <clears throat> we obviously had a little team vote on Friday um, on whether or not to even trade today. And we came to the conclusion that we were going to at least hop on and tape read the market this morning. It is a no news Monday, day before the news, day before, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we got Powell speaking this week twice and we've got NFP on Friday. So if there is a week to temper your expectations, this is absolutely one of them. I do plan on trading every day this week, essentially. Um, but Wednesday and Thursday, I am planning on taking the AM session off. So uh, I'm thinking Wednesday and Thursday will be PM trades only. I just don't want to trade when Powell is doing his thing. Simple as that. Uh, and then today, obviously, a no news Monday. You know, the only no news day before all the craziness goes on this week. So uh, I do think there will be a lot of volatility as the week goes on. Um, and we'll see what we get today. Today, I'm, I don't really know what to expect today. Um, every once in a while, you get a no news Monday that moves more than expected. But uh, more often than not, these are like based on the economic calendar. These are the days that if you can anticipate and expect more seek and destroy conditions, like this is generally what you're looking for. Um, so I don't know if we'll take a trade today, just being totally honest with you. Um, I'm totally okay if we don't take a trade today. Um, I'll tell you where we're at in terms of like my bias. Right now, we're in the middle of two PD arrays. So starting out on the weekly, I already drew in the buy side liquidity for previous weekly high. We took out previous weekly high on NQ only, I believe. Yes. So we did not take it out on ES, but we took it out on NQ. That would create an SMT divergence, obviously. So that's where we're at as far as weekly liquidity goes. Obviously, we had a huge displacing candle above previous weekly highs last week to end out February and, you know, first day of March, uh, dropping down to daily time frame. Um, this could end up being one big daily fair value gap, especially if we get, uh, you know, even a little bit of more movement to the upside, you know, maybe ES wants to go take out the weekly high. So that would probably make NQ obviously deliver to the upside as well, put in a new high, uh, which would leave a daily fair value gap open going forward. Um, or if we just ended up with a seek and destroy like rangy day where we just don't really move a whole lot, you know, you could see that happen as well. Um, so that's kind of what I'm anticipating. Maybe we leave a daily fair value gap open in here. Uh, obviously on the same note, if you keep dropping down, we are delivering from a four hour imbalance, four hour fair value gap, uh, bullish fair value gap there. And then obviously if you look over here on the left, I already have the, uh, 15 and five minute charts pulled up. This white zone is the new week opening gap. Actually had a decent new week opening gap this week from uh, Friday close to Sunday open. So that's what this white shaded area is, if you were wondering. And uh, so far this morning, we have seen price basically trade below that new week opening gap and show respect ever since. So if I continue to just drop back down here. Uh, one minute chart here on the right for NQ. And then uh, obviously 15 and five minute charts for NQ over here on the left. Um, so for me, for right now, this looks bearish. Keep in mind, took out previous weekly high on NQ already. So we're delivering from uh, buy side liquidity on NQ. Uh, but we are inside of a four-hour bullish imbalance at the same time. So uh, that's really it. Like I said, I'm not really sure what to expect today. Um, we debated taking the day off just because, <laughs> just because we're anticipating conditions to not be so hot. So... We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll wait it out. We'll, we'll at least watch. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it at least 30 minutes, guys. You know, if, if price is just ridiculously bad, you know, and rangy and seek and destroy, like, you know, we can start paying attention to this now. We're in the macro, obviously, rolling in the silver blood hour. And, and if price is just bad for 30 minutes, we'll just, like, there's no reason for us to just sit here, you know what I mean, and, and know that we're not going to put a trade on. It's just one of those weeks, man. It's just one of those weeks. All I know is, all I know is this. Um, so far in the month or the year of 2024, boy oh boy have we been caught in some seek and destroy days um and that's probably where the majority of our losses have came from the vast majority so um you know at some point we got to go on defense as well and recognize when the conditions are going to be like that and just lean towards staying away unless we see something that's just like super dumb clear for us to take that uh, is almost so clear that you can't not take it you know what i mean obviously holding up some strength right now this is that low being taken out on NQ right now. Um, 
if that was to bring any sort of reversal, I'd, I'd want to see it happen pretty quickly here. Um, if this thing just keeps displacing hard through there, probably going to continue lower. But yeah, if this manipulates here, uh, I will say this. I definitely don't mind the idea um, of longing into, not even to the London highs. Obviously, London highs would be the high that took a previous weekly high. But like even these internal highs here, um, on smaller time frames, you guys can see, it lines up, I believe, with True Day Open. Yeah, so True Day opens right here. You can see the price kind of already came up and retested it, but it, it created this low resistance liquidity run. All of these stacked lower lows, relative equal lows. Uh, and truthfully, like if we were to get a setup like that, I'd maybe just look to target here just to get out right before True Day open. We'll see what we'll see what it looks like. As of right now, confluences for longs would include SMT at the lows with ES and NQ, four hour bullish fair value gap on NQ. And then obviously if we got confirmation displacement up, that'd be the last thing we would need to justify uh, a long trade here. Little 30 second gap here. Um, I am viewing this price leg here on the one minute to become a breaker potentially, obviously, if it all lines up with the long. And that's what that and that's the move we end up getting. Uh, you see this little one minute gap here being inversed. It just got inversed on the one minute chart. Might go ahead and uh See what risk looks like here. We might go ahead and stab away at this long here. 12 down to there, 16 down to there. Taking this up to, yeah, that's not bad. Limit order to, oh, I'm just gonna do one for now. I'm gonna do a limit order guys, buy limit. But yeah, 30 second bullish fair value gap. Just got tagged in, let's see. Looking at pyramid? Not no, not today. This is fifty points. So it'll be a, that's a thousand. If it hits target, I'm I'm cool with that. Like I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I like I'm not gonna be surprised if we lose today. To be totally honest, so I don't I don't I don't think the day I don't think today is the day to be greedy. But I mean yeah, it's a good setup. Like plenty of reasons for the trade. We are delivering from buy side being swept though on the weekly previous weekly high. So that's the only thing that's going against us really. But good trade, nice reaction now. Kind of go scary there for a second, immediately disrespecting that gap we entered off of. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm probably just going to bring my risk up to this low now because I don't want to see this order block disrespect. Keep keep trimming our risk off here. Risk is now only 250. So a third of, what is that? A third of one, per, no, a third of a half percent. <laughs> just put in some equal highs here, relative equal highs. Engineering more buy side liquidity. Like I said, don't want to see this order block here disrespect gonna be real interesting once we sweep these highs see what we do you know obviously true seek and destroy like you know if, if this if this uh if this one minute doesn't become that bullish breaker it's a big if obviously but if that doesn't happen would almost kind of expect to see price have a very sensitive reaction to this high being taken just hit the o hit the ob <clears throat> moment of truth will be on the one in 30 second All right, guys, now that we've came back and retested, the moment we take this high, my risk is off. All right, my risk is off. I'm going one tick in profit, cover my spread or whatever. Let's let this thing ride it out. Could come get us out, but we already came and retested the gap again. We retested the OB, or not retested, we tested the OB. I don't want to see it come back again. So I'm just playing defense here with the management because of the condition we potentially could see playing out today. So hope that all makes sense. Let me know if you guys have questions about anything. Another OB here, fair value gap here. Our our entry and stop and profit is below mean threshold of the order block and it's below the fair value gap candle. So those would be two PD arrays failing if we got stopped at break even, which I'm okay with getting removed from the trade then if that's the case. But let's watch after this, like after I get stopped at break even here, let's just watch see what price does because We'll see if we avoid a loss, if that was the right call. Because remember, the thought was initially going break even here because I wanted to see this become a breaker. We engineered liquidity internally, just took it out, and then we immediately disrespect two bullish PD arrays. Not to say that the trade couldn't still play out. Even if it did do that, it could do whatever it wants. But if you're thinking in terms of probabilities... 
you know, you would like to see that not happen. All right, so I just got stopped that break even there. Now let's see if we avoided a loss. But hopefully, like, the logic behind all that makes sense. Um, just avoid it. So a loss officially avoided. That would have been our stop loss right there. But, yeah, it, this is playing out exactly how we expected it to today. And we were able to take a good trade with good com confluence. Get, in, get into a position where going break even made sense, even though it was tight. But, it, you know, it all worked out 